All right, now we want to talk a little bit about, of all things, the front of the mouth. There's a lot of talk about behind the, you know, the back of the mouth, the back of the throat, behind the glottal throat. There are all sorts of things back there. Uh, but now we'll have a little discussion of what happens in the front of uh, the front of the mouth. When people say you got something on your mouth, they mean on the front of your mouth. But the mouth really means all the way back from here, all the way back to where the throat begins. So. When Caruso said, never change the shape of your mouth when you go to a high note, what do you think he was talking about? Um, now everybody changes. You go, which way do I change? La, 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 ha. Now go, la, on the low note, boys, that's what I'm doing on the high note, so I have my voice match. La, I don't want my voice to not match. La, la, ha. So there are a number of ways to try to make it sound like you have one voice instead of two or maybe three. Uh, but one of them is there used to be rules about the front of the mouth. And those of, uh, who've, those of you who've been sort of, uh, well, you know, nobody's as old as I am anymore. So let's say I look way back. Um, Elizabeth Schwarzkopf, when I was in Germany, I sang with her often, and she would do this sort of thing. You see her singing, and she would pull her lip down on every note. And uh, when you saw her backstage, she was doing this all the time. So I had a great discussion with her when I was at teaching the University of Texas. I asked her to come and do a master class there, and she came to Texas and did a master class, and uh, uh, and she was trying to get everyone to do this. Uh, Franco Corelli was criticized in the New York Times of all of all papers in New York at the Metropolitan Opera. He was doing this on stage. What was he doing with pulling the lip down like this all the time? You pull the lip out and down like that. La, 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 la. No. Some people call it a frontal cover, an upper front cover. There's all kinds of names for things like that. Today in Italy, they say, Girani la voce, turn the voice. La, 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 la. Girale used to be used in time when I was young, where you go, so you turn a descending interval to try to keep it up in that higher position of the resonance. Anyway, now there's Tibaldi, who had an incredible, really incredible, beautiful voice when she sang lightly and lyrically in the middle voice. Maybe it was the greatest voice in the world at that time. But her loud singing, her big singing, some of her high notes, especially big sustained high notes, she would go oh, and just hang on for dear life. She used to complain all the time that, uh, that nobody ever taught her how to breathe. And, uh, but the one thing she did was this. She only had two vocalises. She would do this one and she would do the happy surprise. La, so Mr. Caruso himself said in his book two things. Never show your teeth when you sing and never change the shape of your mouth when you sing. Now, if mouth meant to him the front of the mouth, the back of the mouth, what does la bocca mean? So he asked an Italian, tell me, what does it mean when I say la bocca? And you go, I say, but what, what, what do you call the inside? He said la bocca. What about up here in the front? He said la bocca. <laughs> so la bocca somehow in Italian, the way they use it, it means this cave up here, this little, that goes back to the back of, and at a certain point, it, it becomes the throat. Um, so what we want to do here is understand what it is and why we do it. If I do, uh, this way. If I do this, I go.
So what is it all? What is the shape of my mouth when I do that? And you'll notice I'm not changing that shape when I get on the high note. The second part of that can apply if I do this. Now don't change the shape of your mouth you're on a high note. La so now we have to figure out which mouth posture was being used. When your mouth consider, and you consider that your jaw is part of it, your lips are part of it, you think what's happening, and some of you like to resonate on the teeth. Young Kipula would sing on his back molars like that. La, 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 la. The voice had a tremendous wang to it and was big in the back of the theater, just not very pretty sometimes. He, he was pretty. He was gorgeous. He was a movie star. And he showed his teeth all the time because he had perfect, beautiful teeth. Caruso would have said, no, no, he would have said two things. He would have said, never show your teeth and don't change the shape of your mouth. Now, let's talk about what the mouth is. The mouth, the roof of the mouth has to do with the soft palate. You have a hard palate and you have a soft palate. So if you're not supposed to change the shape of your mouth, are you supposed to change the shape of your palate and raise the roof sometimes? See? A lot of things we don't know. Uh, because they, they, they were not discussed in absolute detail by those phenomenal singers that we think today were the, you know, the, the epitome of the bel canto era. And what did they learn? So Caruso stole his tips. He says, breathe way down in your lower back and draw the abdomen, the abdomen inward while you breathe. And then don't change the shape of your mouth when you sing. Well, what did my mouth, including this part, this cave, what did my mouth do when I breathe like that? Right? So I go. La. Now I drop my jaw my jaw's so be relaxed like this. La 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 la. I didn't change anything, including the posture of my diaphragm. When I did this. La, my diaphragm responds by jumping up. It goes in when I breathe and jumps outward when I start to sing. But once it jumps outward, I don't push on it. And I don't push, I don't hold. And all I do is maintain the posture that I got because I breathed way behind me and started to tone with the breath very deep without any change of my mouth shape. If I do that, la. My stomach does this, or my, my epigastric area does this. Now, once I start singing, I do not change the shape of that. I maintain the shape of that. La, I go la, so now we all have the right to our opinion, don't we? And we all say, well, I like that one better. I like this one better. I don't like that one, blah, 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 blah. But you have to understand that in the old days, uh, when there was a bel canto style, a bel canto, see, I studied 65 years ago with people that studied 60 years before that. So we're talking about well back into the bel canto era. Uh, Olga Reese, who was my first one I considered really my teacher, because uh, I was four and a half years with her, and uh, she started at the conservatory in, in St. Petersburg, Russia in 1912. The singers who were there were Alma Forsten, who was a superstar of the Lampardi School. Marcella Zembrich was a star in La Scala in New York. And, and Forsten was a Finnish soprano that was a superstar in all of Eastern Europe. And, of course, was at the Tsar's personal opera, the St. Petersburg Opera. Right? And also there was Mattia Battistini, who was considered the ultimate bel canto baritone of all time. Now... We wonder, because we don't have films of them singing, but we do have words from someone like my old teacher who used to go to the opera all the time. The students at the conservatory were always invited to the opera and uh, they didn't have to pay for tickets. They could stand up someplace and get in. And sometimes on opening night, they, they did, couldn't get in because there were no seats. That happened to me in Tristan Isolde in New York. I had free tickets to the Met too, except on occasional performances. <laughs> when Virgil Nilsson made her debut, uh, I couldn't get it. I saw her in the second performance. I saw all her performances after that. But the idea is when you watch singers 
and some singers have something that prevents them from changing the shape of the mouth. Let's say you've been taught to make a trumpet with your lips. Now, if I do that, if that's what I think I'm supposed to do, la, 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 la. well, I didn't change the shape of my mouth, did I? Or my front of my mouth. Um, so the idea is, which one is the right one? Well, there was a way of learning to do this correctly that was one of these old-timey, old-fashioned techniques that Olga Ries, who was my teacher, learned from Forstem, who learned it from Lamperti, Jr., Giovanni Lamperti. And that was to hold your teeth together, just the tips. Don't overbite and don't underbite. Just put the tips lightly touching, like that. And then... I pull my lips, I, I bring my lips to close, I close my lips like this, and I leave a slit. I don't close them that way, I just bring them all the way down, almost to close. So I do this, and then I drop my chin. And that's the position. See? Apparently, oh, one of the main users of this particular posture was this guy. Enrico Caruso, and if you look, you'll notice the shape of his mouth. Some people said it was a natural shape, so we find out it was natural by licking a baby. And you realize the upper lip is straight across, the corners of the mouth are back, and here the corners of the lip are across, and the, and the, upper, and the, uh, uh, the corners are pulled back. And then the front of the tongue is sitting really inside slightly on the lower lip and, and, and protruding the lower lip slightly. And so is our baby girl. She's seven and a half months old. Caruso was 35 when this was made. He's actually singing. And Dr. Montefiotti took pictures of every vowel, and Caruso had a certain mouth shape that he used, which was this one. And how did he get it, apparently? And this stuff I can't swear to because I never, I never uh, talked to a, a, a literal coach. I was, I was friends with the first uh, trumpet player in the orchestra who made all those records with Caruso. I knew him, met him in 1958, and he was, my, um, you know, a retired old geezer like me. I'm not retired yet, though. But anyway, if you touch your teeth slightly, then you bring your lips together. Now, you notice the shape I have. If I drop my chin like this, just let it go. And that's it. I don't have to do this. That would require a flexing of my jaw muscles to open them. And the old rule was no action in the throat, no action in the jaw, and no action in the tongue. So my tongue is like this. Right? My jaw is like this. And it drops a little bit more open if I don't, if I don't begin with my teeth together. If I drop my jaw like this, it goes. But if I put my teeth together and bring my upper lip down like that, and then I drop my chin, it goes. And that's the Caruso baby posture, and uh, uh, that is supposed to be the ideal one. Now, next, the next, let's say, let's say we figured out a way to do that. Now I'm not supposed to open or change or anything when I go to the high note, see? So I do this sort of thing. Let me get going. <clears throat> I'm, I'm a little bit tired. Boys, get them to hit some way up there. We hit hard up in the in this part of what they used to call the true mask. <clears throat> and uh, if you notice. We've all heard about the so-called uh, ideal width of the mouth when it's open. It's supposed to be one finger in the middle voice. And maybe, this was debatable, two fingers in the upper voice. That's two fingers. That's one finger. So it's not much. So the rule, as I learned it from that old school, was, by the old school schooling, um, 
the fact that you pull your upper lip down like that, which is what Corelli and, and the Timaldi and, of course, uh, Schwarzkopf were all doing this. They're all pulling their lip down. And the, where that comes from was what we're talking about right now. If I do this, teeth together, and I pull my lip down, the upper lip down like this, and then I relax my jaw, this action that happens in the upper lip and in the cheeks right here literally prevents my jaw from dropping any farther. So I sing like that. You're going to understand any word I'm saying. And I sing with this posture here. Then I can do things on the inside. But if I do a soft palate lift or something, according to Caruso, I'm not supposed to do that. Everything is supposed to happen with breathing. As George London used to say, nothing moves unless the breathing moves it. Something like this. See, the fact that these go back and this goes down prevents this from falling like this. It holds this up in a funny way, like that. Got it? So the idea is if I breathe in a certain way, my throat opens because my the back of my tongue will go down. My trachea will open and go down. It's a, a real deep vertical inhalation. It, it takes my larynx down with it when I go. And my larynx goes that way down. It's way down here. So I go. And there it is. If I put the teeth together, some people try to use speech method by maintaining a speaking sized uh, vowel all the time. How we do them fine, how you do them feeling fine. If I do it with this rule, I go. How you do them feeling fine, how you do them feeling fine. Not in my nose. So what I've done is I've, I've literally created a posture of the front of the mouth that will stay that way even though I'm singing and I'm doing all kinds of things and anything that happens in the back on the inside with the soft palate or whatever is supposed to be strictly a reaction to breathing. So I do this, put my teeth together and my, and my lips like this, my corners like this, I put my lips down, I go, and that's it. So De La Chia, the famous Fernando De La Chia, the master of the bel canto style as a tenor, uh, was criticized all the time because he, all he ever did was smile. They called it smiling. He smiled all the time, no matter how horrible. His main roles were, were Pagliacci, his main, most successful roles were Pagliacci, Canio, and he murders his wife and her lover. And then Carmen, he murders Carmen in the theater. Well, he was smiling the whole time, so maybe it supposed to look like he enjoyed it, but it was something to do with his vocal method where he can maintain this. And it was more common and more understood, and, and Caruso even talks about it in his book. And certainly Corelli did it all the time, and uh, Delmonico did it when he sang lyrically, he opened like this, when he sang uh, big dramatic music. Um, and Tamali sang only that. The only I'm saying it was very lightly and very uh, in very lyric light middle voice singing, and it was the most squishy sound you ever heard in your life. So those of us, Schwarzkopf always did it, and and uh, instead of holding one posture, she would actually move the lip down all the time like that. It was on that on the vien, so not sure that he's a pet coming to counter. Why don't I just do this? Now, if I pull my lip down and let go, I've got the posture. See? He says, on and on the end, so I'll see you, that he's a perkomil conde. 
right? Hakosila bravosta. So I thought we'd talk a little bit about today about mouth shapes because people are doing incredible things like this. And then you have to speak the language. La da na na mi la qua da ma da na. What language on earth or in the cosmos is spoken like that? None. So it's completely unnatural. And I used to ask the singers in, uh, that I knew, let's call it the British Commonwealth, because they were from all over the place. Uh, and they sang always with their mouths like this. But they didn't open, they didn't drop the chin. They did this. Now, I said, why in the world do you sing with your mouth almost closed all the time? And this New Zealand colleague of mine who did Tristan and all the big monster operas said, well, you know, mate, if you open the barn door, the cow will get out. So the idea is I do this. The resonance wants to go down and under the mask. So you're getting a lot of mouth resonance and not even, probably not even half of what your true resonance could be. La Why can I sing any language right through this cave? See? I think it was even in key, let's see. No, I'm too low. Love, love, can't you believe it? Don't my breeze on me, let us steal. Flat me, excess, set the flood. Garde toujours sa douce oda. In other words, you can sing all the things, the language, whatever you want to sing. That I in German. Goes hier an dem Herzen treugeborgen, die Blume sie von jenem Morgen entblättert welch in Kerkerluft, behielt sie noch den süßen Duft. See? So there's no reason why we can't do this if it if it leads to a kind of resonance that goes up and hits you up here and you don't have to do this because some of your resonance is going to get lost. It's going to go back. You can make big sounds that way. But you, but if you want those tremendous frontal sounds that uh, that uh, do those those singers have on the earliest recordings, I mean, listen, listen to some of these guys. You can't believe what, what they sound like. Covering should not be a verb. <clears throat> it should be an adjective. The tone is covered. Right? La 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 ha. Open, uncovered be la 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 la. That's wrong because it breaks the rule of action. No action in the throat, jaw, or tongue. First rule. The bell comes stuff. But in the same sense, la 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 it's also wrong because it also requires an action and it breaks rule number two, which is no change of the emission. Your emission is supposed to be la 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 I'm singing absolutely legato with a down bow all the time through this frontal shape. And then I don't allow anything to change my throat. To do this, you have to have a breathing method that is very strong and not tired like I am today, right? I mean, it's the end of the day here. I'm, I've been teaching all day. But the whole idea is that I'm not supposed to have to work so hard at holding on. Oh, 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 oh. People get their heads down like this. Oh, I'll see. Well, if you get this going, la, you today, you can sing in any posture you want. The one one posture that you cannot, you're not free about, is the posture of your diaphragm. If I go, my diaphragm jumps up. If I go, 
mark. My diaphragm jumps out. <sighs> my diaphragm jumps out. Now, once that happens, I have to maintain that posture. And by doing this, it helps to maintain my posture. I don't have to change. <coughs> so I go. I'm maintaining this and I'm maintaining that. And the result is this. And the only problem is, it makes your voice sound huge in the theater, and people come back and say, you're a real Helen tenor, you're a dramatic tenor. Would you sing Tannhäuser and Tristan for us? And I said, are you out of your mind? Are you crazy? Uh, I, what do you, I was singing Traviata at the time in Hanover, Germany. No, in Darmstadt, in Darmstadt, Germany, on a guest evening. And these two guys were there from Hanover looking for tenors, and they found that one they wanted. They wanted me to sing, you know. Now, if you do that, if you get the reputation, of having some kind of uh, you know heroic voice, Heldon voice, you know, then then it's hard for people don't want to to uh, offer you other things. So you have to be very careful if you do these things that you mix it always with Italian opera and French opera, and don't get pinholed because the voice will be very very intense. You know, they used to call uh, Giovanni Martinelli the hammer because he had that complete that position, and he achieved it by hammering on his diaphragm. Ah, ha, 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 ha. So if I do that, ha, 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 ha. what is that? Uh. In my heart, work hard, man, the table, them. He still used this formation. So this is the best formation for getting up in the math, the true math, the true resonance, which is up here. <coughs> And it, it requires that you breathe like crazy and lean your breath on your diaphragm and then maintain the diaphragmatic posture. Okay, I hope that's clear. And I hope everybody can uh, think about this and stop going, oh, I'm a baby bird. I would like to have a worm. Everybody looks like they're begging for worms. You know, why? Why not make yourself look at least almost human, right? That's the idea. Okay. Bye-bye.